So sometimes you find your bliss at a very young age. I was only eight years old when I saw something that was so magical to me, I couldn't believe it. I watched as a photograph emerged from a tray of what looked like water on a piece of paper. And, and I was captivated. I, I said, I got to find out how to do this. That was amazing. So I took this. It was in my dad's closet. <laughs> and I asked my dad, can I use it? And he said, yes. So I saved up 50 cents and bought a roll of film and a chemistry set from the drugstore. And I struggled. My first pictures were black. But then I made this, and I was so proud. And that, to me, was the beginning of my bliss. The video you just saw a minute ago, I'm going to explain what it takes to make a video like that, because it takes a lot of effort sometimes. And what I'm about to introduce you to are the bliss commandments. So sometimes you have to go the extra mile. And you can't do this sitting on the couch, right? <laughs> so the video you just saw took three hours of standing in the dark in the middle of a storm while sheet lightning was covering the face of the lake I was on. And you know what? I didn't care. People were saying, Mitch, come on. You can't stay. It's just lightning. You're going to get struck. I said, no problem. I'm sticking. <laughs> this right here is an ice cave in Iceland at the bottom of a glacier. And I looked at that and I said, I have to take that picture. And so I climbed down the glacier. I did my best because I really didn't know where to go. So I climbed down the glacier and I found this spot and I set up my camera and I made the picture. Now this is right behind the hotel that I was staying at, except it was about a half an hour walk through the mud, through the stones at 5 a.m. in the pitch black dark. That's what it takes sometimes to be at the place you want to be at the moment you want to be at. Mount Cook, New Zealand. Again, the, the lake you see there, that was my path. I was on that, on that path for two and a half hours before I could make this picture. Sometimes you have a vision. You see everything as you want, not what it is right now. So here's an example. When I saw this, it was nothing but a gray shack in the dark. And I said, wow, look at that place. I bet I can light that place up with my flashlights. And I did. Same here. I looked at these objects buried in the ground. It's a junkyard, for heaven's sakes. But I was able to put some lights in there, and I experimented until I got it exactly the way I wanted. So the best stuff in life takes time and actually patience. And I don't have a lot of patience, i got to tell you. But standing out here for three hours, can you turn this light lower, please? It's, it's interfering with the... Thank you, thank you. Standing out here for three hours and waiting for the stars and setting up the lighting, the purple headlights, every single thing, I took control of the scene and made it happen. This too. I stood there and waited until the moon and was out of the way and... The stars were in the perfect position and lit everything that way. Now, this is the sunset that everybody left behind. You see, they waited for the sun to go down, but I, did, I didn't leave. I stayed because I knew that sometimes the greatest stuff comes later, not when everybody else expects it. And look, it is all about you. And you know what? You can't feel guilty if no one else gets it, or likes it, for that matter. Do you know how many times I left a wife waiting in a car while I stopped and trudged my way down to a, a ravine to take a picture? But she was used to it. She had her paperback book with her. <laughs> so here I am driving through the Texas country, and I spot, out of nowhere, a phone booth. So I turn the, cat, I turn the headlights, and I look, and... What do I see but a fire hydrant? Oh my God, this is like heaven, nirvana. Okay, it's, it's, it's not a drum set and it's not the Beatles, but this was my opus. This for me was exactly what I hope to find when I travel. A mining shaft, a broken, disgusting, filthy mining shaft with a little bit of love gets to look like this. Don't listen to others. 
Because most people want to be comfortable. We don't have patience. We just want to be comfortable. Well, you can't make this photograph in a comfortable place. You just can't do it. It was freezing cold. The camera was set up on a tripod, and I was below it because there was no room for me. But I had to wait, and I had to paint with light this entire scene. This, for those of you who have seen Lord of the Rings, this is my Lord of the Rings. This is the moment in time on the western coast of Iceland while I waited for the sun to come exactly between those two peaks. And I made that photograph. I had no idea what was going to happen. I just knew that it was me being in front of epic. See, that's really all I'm about. I like to go where there is epic and stand there with my camera. No one experiences the blessings of a blissful life without stretching some boundaries. So let's stretch some boundaries here. How about this for stretching a boundary? This is a 27-shot panoramic inside of a church during the day in Slovenia. So I had to edit about 50 people out of this scene in order to make this picture. But to me, this is stretching the boundaries. This is from 10,000 feet in the air. This is the threaded rivers of New Zealand. And this, to me, shooting from an airplane was one of the most blissful moments of my life. I didn't even know, I forgot that I was in an airplane. <laughs> All I could tell was that I was looking through this camera and seeing the most amazing thing I could imagine ever to see. Staying safe is boring. Honestly, I could stay safe, but a, a, a plane could fall from the sky and kill me in my own house. It's not the safety, it's the, ex it's the expression of going out and finding the things in life. This is a spot in Greenland. I'm sitting there in the middle of this beautiful place in Greenland, and I walk through the mud while dogs are chasing us to find this boat, because we spotted this boat during the day. But I came back and found this boat, and I was so thrilled when I did. This is an iceberg. Let me introduce you to my iceberg. Now, the thing about icebergs, unless you don't know this, is that they calve. Do you know what calving means? Is they start dropping pieces of themselves. And if you are in a boat when an iceberg calves, there's a good chance you might die. But so what? It was worth it. <laughs> and it was. So it's very simple, really. Prepare for your bliss. Do the spade work, do the meditation, the thinking, the praying, the practice, and be in the moment when you are there. Because ultimately, that's the payoff. Because ultimately, if you can be there when this happens, when your moment happens, you will have found your bliss. And I found mine. Slow down, watch, wait, feel. Stop thinking. Just feel. And when you're there, make the exposure. Pull the trigger. Take the action. Walk out on stage. Do what you do. And damn the torpedoes, who gives a shit what anyone thinks? <laughs> so once again, what does it take? It takes patience. It takes time. It takes setup. It takes practice. This, this took us an entire night to practice lighting this trailer before we got it right. Never think you can't until you've tried again and again. I waited until everybody left at the ancient city of Petra to get this photograph. And they were closing the gates. And I said, I don't care. I'll sleep here. No problem. I got to get that picture. The desert of Wadi Rum. Once again, I knew if I climbed up to the top of this one structure, I could get this picture. But I had to wait until the clouds were perfect. Stay focused in this moment. It's the only one that counts. And then, at the end of the day, here we are at Lake Bled in Slovenia. At the end of the day, you can go from this to this. And folks, that's my bliss. <laughs>